really a borderline something almost inhumane. How would you, why would you want to harm other human beings this way? Yeah, it's the same thing here. When it comes down to number one, we're not, uh, we're not at the table. The community has been lied to so many times. Another accident will happen. The plant has four units. They were built in years around 1960, 63, 68, and 76, I believe. It probably was initially selected to be close to the uh, demand, which was downtown for this power plant. So if it's serving somebody else, then we have to carry the burden. We have to be sacrificed so someone else, electricity can be turned on, so someone else can have a nice air condition, so somebody else can have a hardy in the back of their backyard. The power plant had no business being in a residential area. And so we were really pushing forward the whole issue of environmental racism, of putting unwanted uh, industry next to people of color, communities. I feel that that uh, was a you know, ill-advised decision, I guess, to have located it in a residential area, because it was a long time ago when, uh, you know, maybe there wasn't as much uh, public scrutiny or, uh, you know, political clout, you know, that uh, East Austin had. The community was already established in that particular area, and they uh, put up the power plant without any regard to the community. Matter of fact, most of the community weren't even given notice that the power plant was coming in. You know, they just saw something going up. So this power plant could have been put anywhere up and down the river. All right, I'm Reggie Horton, plant manager of Holly Street Power Plant. Um, Holly Street Power Plant is a 600 megawatt generating station employing about 53 employees. Uh, our only fuel is natural gas, and um, we can generate as little as 20 megawatts up to the full 600 megawatts. So it's a very versatile power plant. So the operators interface now via the keyboard and also the touch screens, which is the highest level of modernization of uh, how you can't control a power plant. To build a brand new one today, you have the same type of controls in it. We're a lot more in the spotlight than the other two power plants. The events that occur here and make the news could occur in other plants and nobody will ever know about. wanting them to close that power plant for years uh, and I'm sure the community as a whole would like to see them uh, moved and the power plant closed and turned into uh, part of the recreation center. We're getting ready to play a bingo! Come on everybody, let's play bingo! Come on, 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 we got to live with it. Uh, that plant over there no, doesn't bother me. I live on 2nd Street. <laughs> uh, it sounded like when you go and you put air in your tire, and you know how it, 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 you uh, let it go and it goes like that? OK, but except twice. I mean, really, really, really loud. If it wasn't detrimental to the health of the citizens, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I've lived in this neighborhood all my life and we've never had a problem with it until they started having chemical leaks and the fires there. In October 31st of uh, 2001, we had a uh, fire event initiated from a breaker
uh, this last fire that happened on Halloween night, you had all the children. I mean, everybody was out. And then the smoke and the smell was all over the, the, the city, or in, especially there in the community. And no one really knew what to do. That, that was very scary, especially that some of the residents were not notified right away. Smoke was from wood burning. It was plywood that generated all of the smoke that the people smell. That would not have imposed a, uh, a hazard to the neighborhood. It's essentially no more than a house fire, no more than like the roof of a house that has plywood on it burning. So there was all kinds of fears for the community there. Smoke was bellowing, the kids were walking into the smoke. Uh, there was no security plan, there was no evacuation plan. There was nothing in telling people to go stay in their homes or, and, and go to the Camacho Center, which was within throwing arms of the Highland Power Plant. It was the community that called the fire station and not the Holly Park plant officials. At the time, it was a small break of fire and the plant employees here were in the process of trying to extinguish it. Someone initially called the fire department because they smelled gas. Four units were on the way to Holly plant. So there, the fire department had been called, which meant it was no reason for us to call them again because they were already on their way. They had done a really poor job and, and the, the series of testing that they should have done, they really didn't do. So they really couldn't say it hadn't caused any harm because they hadn't tested for those particular things. The predominant view on the city council, if not the consensus view, that we need to shut the, the, uh, that plant down, I think. In the next couple of years, there'll be other opportunities that present themselves that could uh, really bring that data closer to 2005, the original promise made to the neighborhood. I'm hoping that that is so, because the community is not going anywhere. No, but when it's across I-35, it seems like anything goes. Well, we have news for them. No, not everything goes here. And, and we do care, and we have pride here in East Austin, and we feel strongly that uh, these have not been met by the higher-ups. I mean, the decision-making people. They just seem not to care for whatever reason.